This time on Tunes and Tunes, we're gonna finish putting the engine together. Welcome back to the Vista build series. This time we're putting the engine back together. We're going to check all the oil clearances, then we will do a basic refresh of the engine as well as assemble the timing components. We honed the cylinders in the last episode, now we're going to start with gapping the piston rings. They're labeled top and bottom. Yeah. I'm just putting them in the right way. I'm not telling you, I'm telling our viewers at home. Yeah, right, they know. <laughs> right, Andrew Wellen, you know. <laughs> Tell me what I'm doing wrong, damn it. That's bold of you to assume he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> we'll check the gap on each ring, then adjust them as needed and install them on the corresponding piston. If anyone's wondering, these are NPR piston rings. Got them on a stupid good deal. Yeah, Seller didn't know what he had. One of the nice things about this block is, since it was on a 90 horsepower single overhead cam Vista, it wasn't really abused, has never seen boost, and has never been rebuilt. We're using the factory service manual and a few reputable online resources for the specs and reassembly directions. Alright, so as you can see what we're doing here is we are going to measure our oil clearances on the mains, crankshaft mains. The bearings we have chose to use have been a long time favorite of DSMers and have been proven to be a good choice. We're running the ACL race series. That we got for $29 shipped with the rod bearings. Part number. We're reusing the crankshaft that came in the block. It's the same as the turbo six bolt crank and will be plenty strong for the power that this car will make. Can you put it at top dead center? <laughs> I'm gonna turn it so our oil holes aren't where the plastic is. Just sure, that looks good. We're just going to run these in with my impact set to 40 foot pounds, right? Yeah. You got to do all of them. And then it looks like, uh, looks like that. Squished. Proper crush. Sweet. Let's measure them. A bit towards me, maybe, but... So we got them all measured, and they're all at two thousandths. Two thousandths, looks really good. All right, now we're... What are we doing, Alex? We're putting snot on the bearings. We're putting snot on the bearings because we are going to install the crankshaft because all our clearances looked good. So we've got to install the crankshaft so we can do the rod bearing 
oil clearances. Check those out. All right, crankshaft is is in. How's it feel? Fine. Feels fine. It's got some resistance from the snot. From the snot, yeah. As we put the rings on the pistons, we're making sure to clock the gaps away from each other so they don't line up vertically on the piston. There's that. There's that. That's an X. X enough. Yeah. X, gonna give it to you. All right, there's one. Uh, now let's do the rest. Can you imagine if we had a V8? We'd have to do twice as many. Or an inclined V6. Inclined V6. All right, let's get to work. We picked up a set of good condition used to stock turbo six bolt pistons and rods for this build. The pistons that came in the single cam non-turbo Vista engine are not as forgiving as the turbo pistons once you start adding power. So now we're getting ready to put the rods in. Well, the pistons and rods. And we're gonna check for oil clearances. So we've got it in the ring compressor. And we've got some Earl on that. Yep, some Earl on that. And then we've got uh, some pieces of hose on the rod bolts so they don't scratch anything up or gouge anything. Between, yeah, we're good. We're good. What is it? Between 15 10,000s and 2,000s. Oh, okay. So it's... Sweet. Well, number one is good. One. We'll continue checking the clearances and installing the rest of the rods if they're within spec. With everything installed and torqued, we can spin the crankshaft and everything feels smooth and great. And that's the rotating assembly done. Woo! <laughs> You're ratchet. <laughs> I spun it that way on purpose. That's a high five situation. Oh, we uh... Bed. Time for bed. We need to get the rear main. Yes. Put yeah. On we need to do that. Before we make the block any so heavier. Put it back up on there. I mean, it does that sometimes on its own. But it it wasn't me though. No, I believe you. Ah. Like on its own, it does that on its own. Oh. Ah. I believe you. Okay, I just need you to believe. That. Yeah. I bought a rubber mallet. So I have one now. You didn't have one. Nope. Yeah, when you always just use like the handle to your crescent wrench because it was kind of rubber. Yeah, or my drill. Pop! <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready? Yeah. Oh, that's heavier. That's heavier. Where'd you get it? Oh, good enough. Good stuff. Oh! Can you take me higher? So this, what he's referring to is the uh, the main oil plug. We pulled this out when we cleaned that, but you've already seen so, it. Uh, we just gotta remember to put it back in. You know, we did some 
thread this is stuff. Thread sealant, and this is the gasket tag, so we can oh, put nice. the gasket on the face. That's and then put the so nice. That's nice. Hold down. Yeah, hold down. That's all it is, right? Yeah, that's all it is. We're installing a new rear main seal and housing gasket onto the crankshaft. That's on. All right, so now we can put it back on the engine stand. Yeah. Now we can move on to the front case and balance shafts. We're using a little bit of gasket tack to hold the gasket in place during assembly. That's a big one. Okay. We're making sure to replace every seal and gasket with a new one, including the oil pump. Once the pulleys are on, we can install the balance shaft belt and get it tensioned. Next comes the water pump and water pipe. What you got there? Uh, a Walter pipe. Walter pipe? Before we finish the timing belt, we need to put the head on. Funny enough, the previous owner had planned to turbo swap the car, so he left a set of ARP L19 head studs in the box in the trunk of the car. So that's what we're using along with a Fell Pro head gasket. It's torqued on. It's oh, on. yeah, you're not supposed to use the head gasket anymore. It's all RTV. With the head installed, we can install the cams and rockers, followed by the cam timing gears. What are you putting in there? Cram seals. Gotta cram them in. Yeah, we just got the uh, cam caps torqued down. Got those $40 cams in there. But they're 60. Ship with shipping. Shipping. Oh, they were for you without shipping? Yeah, they were. I didn't know you had part. With the cam gears locked into place, we can move on to installing and tensioning the timing belt. Last but not least is the valve cover. We're very careful to not over torque the bolts. They're easy to over torque and crack the cover. Took four hours to torque the <laughs> valve cover down. <laughs> With the valve cover done, all that's left is the timing belt cover. I put the um, the bolts in the timing cover and get this pupper buttoned up over here on this side. Yeah. Timing cover's on, valve cover's on, spark plug cover glows on, the uh, hmm? I don't know, I accidentally said lasagna. Yeah. But we'll take this back off when we do the plug wires and actually torque the plugs in. We're just covering gap them. We're just and gap them. Making it look pretty and staring at it and keeping, keeping crap out. Claws out of the claws holes. Yeah, but yeah, it's looking good. Now we got to get some uh, thermostat housing jams. Yep. Cool. Let's do that.
With the last of the smaller things installed, the engine is assembled. Thanks for watching! In the next episode, we'll be installing the turbo and manifolds, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Also, check us out on social media and visit tunesandtunes.com. Ha, 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 ha.